Aquarium heaters. There are hundreds, if not thousands of videos all over YouTube giving you every bit of information you're ever gonna need about them. But we've come up with a couple of points about this essential piece of equipment and thought it would be fun to deliver it to you in the form of aquarium heaters, true or false. All right, let's just get this one out of the way first. All aquariums require a heater. False. No matter what everyone tells you, not all aquariums require a heater. And it's not just the obvious cold water fish. There's some fish like goldfish, danios, and white clouds, and tons of others that are considered cold water fish and they actually won't like their water at 80 degrees. Room temperature or even cooler will be perfect for them. But there's other scenarios that would keep you from needing a heater too. Maybe you're one of those people that likes to keep your house at 78 degrees. I don't really understand you people, but I know you're out there. Or maybe you don't keep your home that warm, but you still keep it around 75 and then you've got a bunch of equipment running like filters and pumps that'll raise the temperature a tiny bit. And you also leave your super bright LEDs on all day long so your plants will grow. There's a real good chance you won't need a heater because with all that equipment running along with the temperature of your house, the water's warm enough already. I used to work in the air conditioning and heating industry, and I can tell you from my own experience that the average temperature in people's homes is usually around 72 degrees. In our house, we have our bottom two floors set at 70 degrees. We have our upstairs where all the bedrooms are set to 68 degrees. I gotta be cool when I sleep. I mean, look at me, I'm sweating here making videos. For us, if we wanna keep cichlids or even most community fish, we definitely need heaters because no matter how much equipment we have in there, it'll never be warm enough, especially for Lisa's discus. The best advice I can give you is research the fish you want and check their temperature requirements. If you find that you want a fish that thrives at 72 to 75 degrees, you might be okay. But if you wanna keep African cichlids or discus, you need to heat that water up. Or if you can't afford a heater or you're just dead set against them because you've heard so many nightmare stories, just make sure you pick cooler water fish. It's not a big deal. If you have an older heater and it's made out of a glass tube and it gets exposed to cooler air while doing a water change, it can explode. This is absolutely true and something you need to pay very close attention to. John and I have actually experienced this firsthand and it was pretty scary because it wasn't even at our house. We volunteered to maintain an aquarium at an elementary school here in King George and we'd go there every couple weeks to take care of it. Well, we went there on a hot day when they had the AC on full blast and we were doing a water change. The place was a little chaotic, as you can imagine, and to be honest, we overlooked the heater while we were draining the water out, and boom. I mean, it wasn't like an explosion, but you could smell the burning, and you knew what was going on. It was pretty scary. Yeah, smelling smoke in the middle of an elementary school with kids around, not good. Anyway, we got it taken care of really quick meaning John unplugged it and got it out of the tank along with the little glass pieces. Then we had to go back to the shop and get another heater to replace it. Lesson learned. I don't want you to hear this story in panic though. This was a really old heater that was probably ready to be replaced anyway. And the fact is most if not all modern day heaters have sensors in them that automatically turn the heaters off if they're exposed to air. But whether you have one of those sensors or not, you should pay attention to this. Just disconnect your heater from the bracket, lay it along your substrate, and do your water change. Then you won't have anything to worry about. Oh, by the way, the heater breaking at the school, that was definitely John's fault. I, I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> Now 
On the topic of heaters, you need to know there is no better way to warm things up than to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Just click the red button down there below and I promise you're gonna feel this overwhelming rush of warmth just throughout your whole body. What? Okay, this one might be a little bit confusing, but bear with me, we will get through it, I promise. All preset heaters are automatically set to heat your aquarium to 78 degrees. Boss. All right, let's get into this. First of all, if you have a preset heater, don't freak out and jump out of your seat to go buy a new one. You're most likely okay, but let's talk about it. There are two different types of heaters that don't have any adjustability to them. Both of these types of heaters are under the category of preset, but they do very different things. For example, some preset heaters have built-in thermostats in them that'll cut off when the temperature gets to 78 degrees, while others just heat the water up a certain amount. The CJ Jolly heater doesn't automatically cut off at 78 degrees. It's simply designed to heat water by about four degrees. So if you have a five gallon tank that's in a room temperature of 72 degrees, it'll heat the water to about 76. It doesn't just keep going till it hits a certain temperature, but the Aquion has a built-in thermostat that'll keep going until it's 78 and then it'll cut off. So why would you choose one that just heats the water up a little bit versus the one that has the built-in thermostat? Well, it's very simple. Less components means longer life and more consistency. Is one better than the other? Well, that depends. If you're keeping betas and you just need to bump the temperature a little bit from room temperature, you'll be fine without the thermostat. But if you have a fish that needs exactly 78 degrees and you keep your room really cold, you might be better off with one that has the thermostat. Listen, I know this is confusing. I've tried to keep it simple and be brief and uh, keep the video from being an hour and a half long. It's not that easy when we're talking about this type of heater. If this all confuses you, if I've made a mess of this, just get an adjustable heater that's appropriate to the size of your tank. Set the temperature to 78 degrees and then you can just completely forget about it. Stay away from the preset heaters. I, I'm not trying to scare you away from them. I just wanted everyone to know that it's not that simple that they're all created equal. They're definitely not. As long as your heater is in the water, it's fine. It doesn't matter where you put it. Fox. Yes, the heater simply being in the water will help, but it doesn't mean you can just put it anywhere. This is something you're gonna wanna put some thought into. It's not totally confusing like what John was just talking about, but you still need to put it in the right place. Think about it like this. If you have a fan in the corner of your room and it's facing out, it's gonna circulate the air all throughout the room. But if you take that fan and you turn it around so it's facing the corner, it's not really gonna do much of anything. Aquarium heaters are the same way. If you put your heater in an area of your tank that doesn't get much flow of water, it's not gonna distribute that heat evenly throughout the entire water column. This means you'll have warm spots and cooler spots in the tank. Is this gonna kill your fish? Probably not, but you will find your fish hanging out in certain areas and avoiding other areas because they wanna be warm and cozy. The best way to avoid this is to make sure you're putting your heater in an area that gets the most flow of the water, like near your filter intake or even near an air stone. This will help to make sure the heated water will be distributed throughout the entire tank rather than just little spots. Again, improper heater placement isn't something that's gonna kill your fish, but it'll be a much more comfortable environment in your aquarium for them, and it'll prevent your fish from only hanging out in certain areas. We wanna see them all over the place, exploring every inch of the aquarium, don't we? I mean, if I wanted to see something just sitting around all day, I would just watch John. I'm not watching YouTube videos, I'm working. When shopping for a heater for your aquarium, you're gonna to wanna to look for one that has five watts per gallon of your aquarium. The example would be, if you have a 20 gallon aquarium, you're gonna to wanna to get a 100 watt heater. A lot of people are gonna to wanna to argue with me on this one, but this is true. 
and I'm gonna explain why. If you ask around or do an online search for what size heater you need, you're gonna get tons of different answers. Some will say you need three watts per gallon and some will say five. I'm one of those people that says five gallons and I think I have a pretty good argument for that. Let me know in the comments if you agree. I'm not gonna go all scientific here, I'm just gonna keep things simple. I'm somebody that believes that a piece of equipment that does not have to work as hard is gonna last way longer and be much more efficient. The example would be if you drive your car 80 miles an hour all day long everywhere you go and every time the light turns green, you're flooring it, your car is not gonna last nearly as long as somebody that drives like a grandma, like Lisa. Listen, I'm not kidding. She really does drive like a grandma. Remember the little old lady that was driving in front of Ferris's dad when he was on his way home from work? Yeah, that's Lisa driving. And you want me to blow your mind even more? Lisa really is a grandma. She has our grandson call her Mimi. And yes, that means I am a grandpa too. And I know that's not very hard for you to believe. And yes, uh, she wants him to call me Pee Pee. No, it's so embarrassing. Anyway, I look at heaters the same way as Grandma Lisa driving slow in front of Ferris Bueller's dad. If the heater doesn't have to work as hard to heat the water, it's gonna be much more efficient. Consume less power, which helps your monthly bill situation, and it'll last you much, much longer. Everyone always talks about heaters always breaking. Well, if you're pushing them to their limits and making them work extra hard, you can't expect to get that much life out of them. Buying a heater that's a size up from what you really need will mean it doesn't have to work as hard or as much as a smaller one. This will extend the life of it and keep the water at a much more consistent temperature. So keep it simple, use the five watt per gallon rule and it'll help you with that anxiety, worrying about whether or not it's working too hard or it's gonna blow up. And it won't break the bank either. We carry the Eheim Thermocontrol E heaters on our website, keepfishkeeping.com and a 150 watt heater literally costs $1 more than the 100 watt heater. And a 300 watt heater costs the exact same amount as a 250 watt. So it's kind of a no brainer. So there you go, a common sense approach to aquarium heaters. Don't forget folks, if you want to heat things up again and bring that spark back into your life, click that subscribe button down below. And if you really appreciate the content, maybe click the like button too, who knows? We don't usually ask for that, but it's fun now and then to see if you will actually do it. Anyway, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching, bye.